So should we be lying to our subject during interviewing and interrogation? Let's check it out with tip number 39 of 101 tips for interviewers and interrogators. Hey, welcome back. Stan Walters with you again. Tip number 39 on interviewing and interrogation. Let's talk about should we lie to our subject. Now, in this particular situation, I'm going to combine the concept of lying and bluffing together. There's a margin difference, and you could obviously semantically argue about that, but just for our purposes, let's talk about this. So let's remember a few minutes ago or a few episodes ago, we talked about um, strategic use of evidence. When do we bring forth evidence? So let's think what happens when you lie to a subject about the existence of evidence. So right off the bat, you violate that principle that it's easier and more accurate to spot deception if you hold evidence as long as absolutely possible. Now, the whole principle behind that is the subject doesn't know what you do have because you're holding all your cards close to your vest. And so they don't see that. And so you let them talk and then give their story or give their narration about what happened or give their alibi, whatever the case may be. Then you can go back and say, wait a minute, but I have this. And by doing that, you get about a 68 to 70 percent more accuracy in spotting deception and higher per individual statement. If you lie about evidence, there's, there's problems here right up front. First of all, you're lying about evidence. You're, you're giving away um, information that's going to contaminate or could contaminate a subject, particularly if they're the subjects who are on the marginal edge of being able to be reliable statements. Uh, intellectual development disorder, uh, children, sometimes psychosis, that type of thing. So later, if you hear that information back, you're going to experience confirmation bias and believe, see, he did do it. He told me this. Either it might be a little wrong, but he's got the rest of it right. Then you see you've contaminated your subject. It's also important for the interviewer to maintain credibility in the room. So if you tell your subject to lie to them and they know that you have lied, nothing else you say from then on is going to have an impact because you have lost credibility and lost standing with the subject and you're resorting to manipulation. Great interviewers should not have to manipulate their subjects. Great interviewers should not have to manipulate their subjects. Excellent and virtuoso quality top shelf investigators or interviewers use persuasion tactics and persuade their subject what's best for their particular situation, not by lying to them. Now, there's also a problem of lying you create that urge or that sense also, should we then create or alter evidence to make it match what the subject said of what I have used in my interview? So you've crossed that line on ethics. So there's, there's real problems here with lying. I, I'm not going to create controversy on this. I know a lot of people say, well, you're going to lie to your subject. Look what they've done. You know, it all is fair. No, it's not all fair. Yeah, they, yeah, maybe they've done the worst crime in the world. But are you going to jeopardize the prosecution or the dismissal of that employee or the ethics investigation by lying? What then do you look like when it comes time for the jury, the personnel board, the administrative board, and here's what you have done by manipulating the subject? Again, you've lost credibility with your brand, with that board or with that jury or the judge. Uh, now, I will tell, ask the subject, would there be any reason? Is it possible or could there be a situation where your username and password had used to gain access to the, uh, to the payroll records or the travel records or the, the computer system? Yeah, now that, but I am not lying. I'm letting the subject wonder, is or is there not evidence? But I haven't contaminated them with that and I'm not risk losing my credibility and my leverage or my brand as being an ethical interviewer. So in, in short principle, no. I do not recommend lying to your subject. If you have to lie to your subject, it's time for you to go back and do a little more preparational work on your case. And you need to work more on your persuasion skills, which we'll work on later when you find in some of my online training programs. And speaking of that, if you will, please, uh, click the like button below. I want to hear your comments. I know I'm going to stir some controversy on this because a lot of folks uh, stirred controversy on the anger issue, saying that it's all right to attack the subject and be angry and let them know who's in charge. So I want to hear your position on this and hear your stories about it. I want to, to get that dialogue out there. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button to connect with the rest of the series. And I, I value your opinion. Please pass this along to other folks and pass the link to them. I want to get as many investigators and viewers engaged and involved in this conversation. Check my website for more resources, textbooks, pocket guides. Some on-demand courses are great for fine-tuning just the small parts and special parts uh, of your training. Just remember my objective 
is until every investigator becomes the go-to interviewer that will get the information. Be safe and see you back for tip number 40. Take care.